Hello everyone, welcome back to another high level match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is the grand finals of the ESL StarCraft 2 Master Summer, which is a premier StarCraft tournament that just wrapped up last Sunday. For this event, $75,000 is on the line, and this right here is the finals, where in game number one of this best of seven series, we find ourselves on the map of Royal Blood. Spotting right here in the top right hand corner, playing with the blue Zerg drones. We have a man who many expect to be in any grand finals of any tournament because, well, he's considered to be the greatest StarCraft II player of all time, and he's still certainly one of the very best. We're looking inside of the main base of Serral. His opponent, though, in the opposite corner. I mean, I don't want to show any disrespect towards this man whatsoever because I am one of his biggest fans. Thing is though, when it comes to Terran players that signed up and that managed to qualify for this particular tournament, we had Maru, Bjorn, Cure, Bunny, Clem, even Spirit has been looking insane lately. The world champion Oliveira, I mean he qualified but he didn't get his visa down in time to actually participate in this tournament. But anyways, what I'm saying is there were a lot of really great Terrans at this tournament, but it turns out the person that's going up against Cero in the Grand Finals. Playing right here with the Red Terran SCVs, we have Gumiho. The Gumi God, the Tao Terran himself. Gumiho has been playing different strategies ever since he first started playing the game, which must be over a decade ago. At the very least, I feel like I've been watching Gumiho games for at least a decade at this point in time. He's very much so the type of guy who will come up with his own strategies and his own twists on things. and. I really enjoy watching this man play, and he had some really stellar results. He took down Spirit, he took down Maru, he 3 one Cure in the quarterfinals, and then he managed to win over Solar 3-0. Solar, who looked absolutely incredible, by the way, and especially the Terran versus Zerg matchup, but Gumiho took him down 3-0 in the semifinals. So Gumiho was clearly feeling it. I was, yeah, very much so getting Oliveira vibes from I Am Karavitsa just earlier this year, back in February. Now. Talking about this series real quick, a uh, little bit of a caveat. Um, I just actually flew home from this event yesterday morning. So I was one of the commentators for this event. I did not cast the finals, but of course, since, you know, I was there, um, I do know who ends up winning it. But honestly, it's all about the journey, right? It's not so much about the destination, it's all about the journey. I did watch the games as well as they were being played, but I was honestly very tired, didn't really sleep that much, and uh, today we're gonna be able to enjoy them. With full attention. Well, at the very least, I am. I don't know. I think many of you are probably watching these videos while maybe, uh, I don't know, at work, maybe on a second monitor. I know some of you, though, probably have this video playing in, like, the living room on the big screen. The windows are closed. The blinds are closed. Everything is focused on this one series. Right? No? Nobody watches my videos like that? Okay. Doesn't matter. Anyhow, Serral opening up. Cute little move right there by Gumi. Sarah opening up with the 15 supply hatchery right there on the low ground, which is something that I've already discussed to death over the last couple of months. This is a, a relatively new strategy. Well, honestly, it's an old strategy that once again has gained popularity. For the longest time, honestly, ever since Legacy of the Void has come out in like 2015, it's all been 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 spawning pool. Can he get the tumor? That would be really nice. E no. Ooh, instant Roach Warren. 3 minutes and 20 seconds Roach Warren. Anyways, this is a change that Zerks have been making over the last few months. Serral, uh, certainly one of them, and if Serral's doing it, I do suspect that a lot of other Zerks are gonna start playing this style as well. Anyhow, Serral, starting off this particular series with a little bit of aggression. We've got ourselves a Roach Warren at 320, second Gas Geyser, no Ling Speed. I suspect that these drones that are now on the production tab are gonna be the last ones for the time being. Serral hitting a supply block at 52 out of 52, but that is by design. He's gonna get some supply right here from this hatchery that's finishing up right now. He's making three overlords as well. Gumi is gonna scout the main base. All right, just trying to be a little bit annoying. He hasn't seen the Roach Warren yet, and that's honestly a big tell. Seeing the second gas though, even though he didn't see the Roach Warren, is also really good to know. Now, how much are we gonna commit to this? Okay, it's four roaches only. Five roaches, six roaches, I was gonna say. That seems like a very small amount, but Serral not going all in with this. Instead, he's just gonna go and put a little bit of pressure on the opponent while then following it up with the spawning pool upgrade. He actually canceled that one just now. And he decided to go for the lair instead. That is a little interesting. A little bit of indecisiveness right there coming out of Serral. Maybe he originally was planning to go for aggression, but he's decided, you know what, if there is a Benchy play coming up right here on the other side of the map, I'll just be using this defensively here. This is a bit of a funky style though from Gumiho. I've been talking about Serral's strategy, but this is a Gumiho built to a T, bringing 
One Cyclone, not a unit we really see in this matchup very often at all. One Cyclone together with four Marines across the map to start sniping some of those Overlords. And you know what? That's another OV going down. It's a little sad, man. Falling down the, sp uh, the, the space platform somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it's going right now. There's, there's clearly some sort of gravity, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be falling down. Anyhow, there's a planet over there in the distance, though. Not exactly sure how this, uh, how this solar system and planet that we are currently on works, but... That's okay. Double evolution chamber right now on the back of it. The build up right here from Serral, the early game certainly indicated that he wanted to play something aggressive, but he clearly scouted something that, yeah, forced him to play a little bit more defensively here instead. Maybe it was actually this Medivac move out, right? Could have been, for example, four Hellions. That would be a very normal thing, or three Hellions inside of the Medivac instead of what came out of it here in the end. Alrighty, so, we're transitioning towards what seems to be a standard mid-game here for Terran. Although Gumiho really does need to fire up, there we go. The armor upgrade for his marines as well. He's adding on additional wrecks right now, so we're going all the way up to five barracks here. Together with one factory, and a second factory right now on the back of it too. I was wondering when he was gonna plant that one down. Relatively normal. Here come the Hellions though, and this is really cute because this is not something we normally see from Terran players. Such a, a strange beginning. Oh, well, we see some transfusions here coming down as well from Serral, so that's nice, I guess, trying to save some of the drones, but his roaches are occupied over there to try and keep that fourth base alive. There were more roaches over here hiding underneath this cloud of overlords, but in the end, that's eight drones going down at the cost of just four Hellions. So the norm is to go for Marine into, well, maybe a Reaper first into a Marine, and then a bunch of Hellions, then a Benshee, then maybe some Medivac play after that, right? But Gubiho very much so opening up with what looks relatively normal, but he changes up his gas timings a little bit, he changes up the order in which he gets units, and normally when you don't go for Hellions right at the very start, you end up not going for Hellions at all. But apparently, Gumiho is still squeezing a bunch of them out, getting a good couple of kills. Now we have Clock Benches on the back of this, now there is Transfusion, so Serral is gonna be able to push this back eventually, but stellar control here so far by Gumi. It makes me very happy to see Gumiho doing so well, by the way. Look at that. Insane. So 19 workers have gone down, and that's not even the end of it. That's so sick. So Serral, in case you're unfamiliar with his playstyle, he is the type of guy who will lose literally no workers at all against Oracle openers. If you go for what is considered to be the most standard builds out there, Serral doesn't really lose. So you have to mix it up. You have to go for strategies that may seem suboptimal in order to actually catch him off guard. And it turns out there are still build orders out there that Serral is not entirely familiar with. He's not exactly sure how to defend against it. And, well, if you hit him in the face with it often enough, apparently he will take damage here. Cute little start right here from Gumi for sure. Is he going to be able to actually follow this up with proper amounts of aggression too, though? Because this is by no means over yet. There are infestors available. Fungal growth, absolutely terrifying here for the Terran player. Has he seen them? He does see them right now. Very important! Oh my god, massive fungal over there. Not enough though, one fungal that is, to actually finish off that clump of marines. And there are a few medevacs up in the air, three of them in total, to make sure that he can actually heal these units back up to full. But this is gonna slow things down. Sarah also has a little uh, changeling running around, just making sure that there's no medevac drops or anything along those lines heading across the map. Benchy over here from earlier, trying to now defend against a little roach run by. Lovely little play right here from Serral though. This is not really something that Gumiho is too prepared for. He does have a bunch of reinforcing units. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna be able to push this back relatively easily, but at the very least, this aggression here at the front, it's been slowed down quite a bit. Zerkling's coming up, Lurker's coming up as well. As soon as the Lurker ranged upgrade finishes, uh, I think this is gonna be very difficult. We will see some corrosive balls there. That siege tank is certainly going to fall. Link's going around the right side of the map too. Fourth command center though is taken on the left side, as we do have another CC coming up here at the six o'clock position. But if he targets us down the command center itself, I do believe it will die. There we go. 300 minerals. Uh, yeah, at least gets a bunch of it back, but... Gumiho apparently just setting up shop right here in the middle of the map. He needs to be very careful though. Whenever you sit around for this long, it's very easy for the Zerg to just make non-stop army and overwhelm you at some point. Lurkers are coming up. Here's that Ling run by once again. Roach run by as well on the left side of the map. A little bit of a push here on the left, but Serral apparently fast enough for that aggression too. Gumiho, in case you're unfamiliar, he's known for his creative playstyles and for his crazy decision making. 
But he's also known for being a little bit slower than some of those other Terran players that I mentioned earlier. So 300 average actions per minute is by no means slow. But you have to stay on top of everything when you're going up against somebody of the caliber of Serral. Serral's not even at full power here yet. Uh, the man is known to average up to like 450, maybe even 500 actions per minute. Obviously, you gotta take it with a grain of salt because of repeat rates, yada, yada, yada. I've discussed that many times before. But yeah, it is something to note here. If Gumiho is trying to out-multitask Serral, and he's trying to win through sheer oppressive playstyles, right? What, for example, Clem likes to do, and some of the other Terrans out there, I don't think it's going to be his best approach. That being said, though, this drop over here in the main base does very little, but he does manage to get a kill over here at that base in the center. Gumiho right now basically maxed out. He's fired up the 3-3 upgrades too. 2-2 is already done. Serral not really able to transition towards any of that just yet. He's been up with his back against the wall ever since the early game. Only a single lurker here available. Gumiho is pushing through the center of the map right now. There are still infestors available though. Nice sniping over there with those marauders. Lurkers moving forward, but since there's no fungal on those units, they're gonna be able to run back again as well. Drop going back down in the main base. We do have that little push over here on the right side. Still somewhat alive with a missile turret now set up as well. I do think Serral's gonna be able to clean all of this up, but... Uh, just getting the siege tank, I guess, is also pretty good. Okay. Here we go. Gumiho, starting up a slow push. Straight through the center of the map. There are Vipers now, though, and Vipers are amazing. Yep. Yoink, getting a second one as well. Not bad whatsoever. This is big power spike, though. In about a minute from now, Gumiho's units are gonna be significantly more powerful. The question is, is he making the right units? What you really need against this Lurker-based army is Ghosts. And honestly, props right here to Serral for defending, because I think a lot of Zerks would have already gone down at this point in time. He's actually managed to stabilize really nicely. His upgrades aren't really that great yet, but if it's up to him, he's gonna be able to get there, well, in the next few minutes. Okay, a lot of Lurkers though, right now available. Careful here, Serral. Okay, well actually, no. <laughs> I take that back. Careful right here, Gumiho. Massive blinding clouds. He's not properly split on his units at all. That is three siege tanks going down to three biles in total. Serral manages to win that engagement there. I think if that was Bjorn, he would have jumped on those Lurkers right away. He would have tried to split against them and somehow, some way, uh, grab an advantage for himself. Gumiho though, a little late on the reaction, just like I don't know, a quarter of a second or so? Right now, he's being overwhelmed. And what started off as an amazing game for Gumiho, it ends with a Serral victory. Ancient Cistern. That's map number two in this best of seven series. I fast forwarded through the first couple minutes of the game, just to make sure that we don't have to sit here and just watch these guys make workers. Gumiho, though, has decided to go for a command center first this time around. Probably pretty happy with how the early game went in that previous match, but yeah, the follow-up not quite as ideal. And that's honestly where Serral is incredibly scary, right? So, a lot of players out there... So, we actually have some sort of 2-1-1, it looks like. A lot of players out there do have some sort of weakness, right? I mean, that seems a, a very obvious thing to say, but there's a handful of players in StarCraft 2 that really seem to be incredibly strong at every stage of the game. And I would say that Serral is one of that select view. He doesn't really have any... I'm, I'm trying to think, where would he be most vulnerable? It's not early game, it's not mid game, it's not against cheese, it's definitely not late game either. Maybe he can be a little bit too predictable, but he's clearly been working on that over the last year or so, where initially he kind of had that innovation thing going on, where innovation was literally playing the exact same build every single game, in every single matchup, in every single map, or on every single map, I suppose. But Serro in general these days... He does mix it up, he's not very predictable anymore. Zerk versus Zerk has always been his weakness, but last time I checked, Gumiho is a Terran player. And yeah, even though Gumiho did deal significant amounts of damage in the early game of that previous one, and he did certainly create an advantage for himself, closing out the advantage is absolutely critical, and I think if this game goes to late game, or if any of these games go to late game, Serral will likely have the advantage. Now, Gumiho is known for being a mech player. This particular game, he starts off with double barracks, so certainly... Oh, there's actually a tech lab coming up right now, too. Interesting. 
Um, certainly not a mech start, but yes, I have seen him play Triple Rex before with a transition towards mech eventually, but we're at the engineering bay coming up right now with the stim pack coming up right now. I don't think this will be a mech game, but we can certainly expect some of that moving forward in this series as well. Most of the top level Terrans, they don't really enjoy playing mech nearly as much as they enjoy playing bio. So real quick, in case you're unfamiliar, uh, bio Terran would be an infantry based army with biological units and mech based would be mechanical mechanical armies and obviously they come mostly out of the factory as well as the star portal though well ghosts are usually added into the mix too anyhow so far though this game is <laughs> off to a relatively normal start but a bit of a funky uh, i don't know so the structures that he's got right here Two barracks, one factory, one starport, not very weird at all. Normally though, with a 2-1-1 opener, which is what he's essentially gone for over here, you see a barracks with a tech lab on it, check. You see a barracks with a reactor on it, check. And then you usually have the factory producing a reactor for the starport. So the starport can produce two medevex, and you can actually fly across the map right around this, well, point in the game, to go for a big push with 16 marines, stim pack, and... Well, a bunch of medevacs up in the air. It's a powerful attack. With this particular version, though, apparently Gumiho has decided to go for two Hellions as well. He did go for the Reaper. Now there's a third CC coming up, but maybe more importantly, there's a siege tank in the uh, in the main base. Okay. A little bit funky. Yeah. Gumiho apparently hates overlords in this series so far. That seems to be what most of his early game aggression uh, starts off with. And you can see this reflected already on the minimap. Look at how much of the map is already covered with all of that creep here by Serral. This is the downside of not opening up with a quote unquote normal amount of Hellions. Serral's gonna be able to just spread creep whenever those tumors are available. And you can see here, he's not even completely perfect when it comes to spreading the creep either. There we go. He had a couple seconds there. Can't believe it, Serral. As long as you cover at least part of your side of the map with creep, though, it becomes so much easier to defend against whatever the Terran player has got in store for you. Cyril may be a little bit confused here too. Now he did decide to go. Well, he did decide to go for a very safe beginning, so not really that many drones, considering the aggression here from the Terran, and yeah, a very quick Banelink speed upgrade too. He's gonna go for the second Evo chamber here eventually, but you can see that Cyril is just. Crossing his T's, dotting his I's, not really taking a whole lot of chances here, not really taking a whole lot of risks. He knows that all of these units that he's seen out on the map, they're gonna be on his creep before too long. And the question is, when do you need to start making army to defend against this? I think he probably assumed actually that this was some sort of two base play. Because this third command center is a little bit funky. And earlier on in this tournament, we did see, for example, Maru going for a whole bunch of two base aggression, uh, especially against Zerks, which is a little bit funny and not really something we see all too often. So that's probably in the back of Serral's mind here as well, but none of that is actually the case. Now suddenly though, Serral finds himself with a relatively mediocre economy compared to where he could have been if he realized exactly what was going on on the side of the Terran. So even though the early game right here didn't really deal any damage, Gumiho actually finds himself in a, a very good position here. Mostly just because of the meta and the way that he abuses that knowledge. Abuses? Maybe uses is a better way to say it, huh? Anyways, moving forward right now. Really lovely stim pack, yeah. Getting a bunch of those queens, not bad at all. Once more, inviting all of those Zerg units off creep. Serral though, doing Serral things, rather than inviting or, you know, accepting the invitation, he decides to go into the natural expansion here, as well as the third base. Those siege tanks actually really hurting the SCVs too. How many more workers can we kill over here? Good pullback right there. At the same time, the fight at the bottom of the map has also been won by Gumiho. Eight SCVs have gone down, but he did kill a tremendous amount of Lings and Banes, and he also did kill the hatchery right over here at the bottom of the map. Couple of Hellions here, that would be nice for them to fire once again at the Lings and Banes, really softening that up. Queens take forever killing a Siege Tank, and that tank over there already has 15 kills. Ooh, lovely player right here by Gumiho. Yeah, he's not really known as a Terran player who's amazing at splitting his units off creep or whatever. That's not really necessarily where his strengths are. But he's playing this very cleverly. Okay, so. No fourth command center, however. At this point, we're still on five wrecks. Are we gonna add on even more barracks? That's the question. He's added on a bunch of liberators here. That's also very curious. 
So we're only at three Medivex already going into the Liberator play. Normally we wouldn't see that until at least another two, maybe even three cycles of Medivex at the earliest possible moment, but no, he's going straight into Lips here. Okay, those Hellbats actually also really helping out quite a bit. Decent split right there from our Terran player. That Siege Tank here on the left does look like it will fall. Good defense right there by Serral. Notice the worker count here for Serral though. Yeah, he's only really lost a handful of workers. Six is really nothing all too crazy. But he hasn't really had a moment to drone up properly in this game. He assumed that Terran was going to be a lot more aggressive off of two bases. So he was prepared for a two base push. And then he finds himself actually playing against three base Terran. Serral evacuating this base as well, it seems. Liberators and Siege Tanks are a banger unit comp. At the same moment though, there is once again a Ling run by, but good defensive uh, maneuvering right there by Gumi. Pulling back those SCVs right in the correct moment. And you know what? He kills the hatchery right here at the 9 o'clock position too. Gumi Ho once again finds himself in a really lovely spot. Game 1 was close. Really could have easily gone and swung in Gumi Ho's favor. Game number 2... Very similar position. I like this spot a whole lot better for him than I do for Serral. Look at that. Cute little marine hold position there. Trying to make sure that the rest of that Terran army managed to get away. Serral does still have that base all the way at the bottom of the map. I mean, he once again has it, I guess is a better way to put it. Because he did lose that one earlier. Plus two, plus two, finishing up here for Terran. Serral did already get the plus two armor upgrade for his Lings and his Banes. Plus two melee though, finishing up a little bit later. Okay. Lovely little bit of Sim City going on here too, right? Yeah, he's really creating choke points here. I, I wasn't entirely sure what they were for, but... These random uh, sprinklings of supply depots turns out to be very helpful to reduce the surface area that those Lings and Banes can actually use. Okay, he's trying to, once again, invite all of those Zerg units off creep. We have a little fight over here as well. Gumiho all over that picks up, gets them out of there. Good. Siege tank's there in the back. I wouldn't mind seeing some of these units here that are a little bit further north. Also, rolling down south a little bit more. The Bailing Nest actually in a little bit of trouble. The Bailing Nest is one of the lifelines right here for Serral. That means he can't make Banes until he remakes it. Obviously, the upgrade is still going to be there, but that is very painful. At the same time, there's a drop down south. Any Bailings that he kills right now is significant. Serral remaking the Bailing Nest probably inside of the main base. No, actually over at the third base. Anyways, Bane's going into the main base. 24 SCVs have gone down right now. And I think there's going to be quite a few more as soon as those Banelings decide to commit. Okay, they did commit right there as I uh, move the camera. Absolute classic. 27 workers now remain for Gumiho. And this is reminiscent of the previous game. Amazing start, solid mid game, but then as soon as the game goes a little bit later, it is Gumiho who seems to be a little bit, yeah, behind again. So many SCVs have gone down late on the stim pack over there as well, so loads more marines actually fall. Lynx trying to just grab whatever they can in the middle of the map, Metavex are nearby, they're gonna pick up at least some of them. Now that the second Baneling Nest is done, Serral's gonna start morphing in a few Banes once again. Keep in mind that Gumiho is still just on 3cc, right? So even though... Yeah, he lost a lot of workers. He doesn't actually have that many mineral fields to mine anyway. So obviously he can fly one of those orbital commands in a different location. I do really like this spot over here for him though. Because Zerk can't really get creep over there. And Gumiho is dancing, man. He's dancing at the edge of the creep spread. Serral recognizes it right now as well. As he decides to put down a few tumors once again. Okay, grabs that tumor uh, group though. Nicely done. I wouldn't mind seeing a scan over here, but I understand that most of his energy right now is used on mules. Siege tank here in the back does deal a lot of damage. Liberator also ends up falling. The marine clump right here though for Gumi is still absolutely massive. He doesn't have an economy, but he's got a phenomenal standing army. Gumi Ho needs to be so careful. If any of those Banelings connect with his units, he is gonna have to GG out. He's forced to pick up right now. Serral gets the wrap around on that siege tank. He immediately unloads once again. He does grab a whole lot of those Zerklings though. Not bad whatsoever. Serral doesn't have a great economy and that trait certainly was good for our Terran player. But 
Again, he can't really reproduce very easily. Well, I mean, I say that nine SCVs, or sorry, nine Marines here are on the production tab at any given moment. He still has a few mineral fields to, well, mine out, but he needs to be so cautious. Serral spreading some creep once again in the middle of the map. He's now taking that base here in the middle too. The middle of his bases, that is. Natural expansion in a little bit of trouble. Gumiho trying to multitask to the best of his abilities. Oh, normally this is where Gumiho, in my opinion, usually falls short a little bit against the top-level Terrans, or sorry, against the, the top-level Zergs, but... He's doing a great job so far in this particular game. Look at all the multitasking. Actually outpacing Serral, it looks like. Once again, a little Ling run-by over here, though, is gonna grab a few of those Marines that just popped out of the barracks. Drop in the main base is gonna head on down to watch the third base location. Serral needs to be careful, he doesn't lose too many drones. This is not a game where he can really squeeze out additional workers. SCV's going down as well, but reinforcing Marines eventually do get rid of all of those links. Drop over here at the third base of Serral. Once again picked up, it's gonna go into the main base instead. Another Ling run by. More Marines reinforcing this. Yeah, these Ling run bys are painful though. These Zerkling run bys, they constantly trade efficiently against those Marines. And considering the income right now for both players, this is obviously gonna go, well, in Serral's favor eventually. But the spawning pool right now is getting targeted down. Without a spawning pool, Serral can only make Bane Links. He needs a spawning pool. Spawning pools at this stage in the game take a surprisingly long amount of time to build. Serral right now going to town against the last SCVs of the Terran. Only, well, two remain. Okay, apparently that last one gets to live. There's one more, I guess, in the main base, mining gas, apparently. Anyways, that is very scary. Serral only just now realized that he actually didn't have a spawning pool anymore. And this structure takes forever. Spawning pool right now, absolutely critical. Natural expansion here and a little bit of trouble. Okay, Serral does boost, or sorry, yeah, Gumiho does boost and get on out of there. Does he have enough? Does he have enough to clean all of this up? The man's got basically no income. Well, mules are still pretty good, I suppose. 900 minerals or so a minute, 600 minerals a minute as soon as those mules expire. Reinforcing units in the middle of the map. Serral has loads of money in the bank, but no way to actually make units. And because of that, it's Gumiho who obtains the victory. Dragon Scales, game number three. Gumiho starts off this particular game by sending an SCV straight across the map. I've got a feeling, by the way, that this video is gonna be a little bit messy as far as the commentary goes. I mean, in the previous game, I already messed up unit names um, more so than I normally do. I usually already derp out a little bit. I think I may be a, a little tired still, even though I did sleep incredibly well last night. So, this tournament had wrapped up on Sunday. I think this finals, and by the time I got out of the venue on Sunday, it was probably like 10 p.m. maybe? Then we went to like a, an after party, a DreamHack after party, which was really quite fun. I'm not a big after party kind of guy. I'm not really a club kind of guy at all, but stuck around there for a little while. And then my shuttle to the airport was at like 5 in the morning. So, I slept four hours, threw a bunch of stuff in my suitcase, traveled back home to the Netherlands. I was back home at like 1 p.m. I decided to stream going live at 2 p.m. That may have been a mistake, although in hindsight it actually went quite well. Um, I decided to do some StarCraft 2 laddering. I derped out really hard, but I did win like six games in a row, which is a little bit surprising. Anyways, I slept like nine hours though last night, but I, yeah, my, my poor nerd body, not really made for only uh Maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe that's it. Probably I'm just getting old. Anyways, Gumiho, starting off this particular game with two barracks on the other side of the map. Serral has decided to go for a hatchery into a gas geyser, and then eventually a spawning pool as well. This is, of course, the standard, but he needs to be very cautious. If you don't approach this particular strategy properly, you can take a tremendous amount of damage. Gumiho not gonna save up any of the Reapers, he's gonna jump straight into the main base of the Zerk. And he's gonna be able to start dealing some damage. Now, just by the timing alone, Serral will know exactly what he's playing against. Running these drones as far away as possible, morphing them into uh, some structures here too, just to try and not lose them. He did mine exactly 100 gas, which is what he needs over here to go for the metabolic boost upgrade. Apparently he mined 104, but here's that second Reaper joining in. Now, again, <laughs> I don't think anybody really considers Gumiho to be one of the very best micro Terrans in the world. 
But so far in this series, he's been doing a phenomenal job once again. I mean, it, he did throw that one grenade at his own feet, which may be suboptimal. So far, good micro as well by Sero, of course, trying his very best with those slow links and slow drones to prevent this Terran from dealing critical amounts of damage. Link speed has been fired up. Two queens right now in the main base. We've got a spine crawler coming too. Serral trying to force these games to go a little bit longer, right? But Gumiho trying with whatever strategy he can to prevent that. And so far, I mean, he gets a drone kill over there. So far, this game is off to a flying start. That said, he needs to be careful. This is one base aggression. There is a factory here on the back of it, but no command center or anything along those lines. So even though the micro here is solid by the Terran player, has he done critical amounts of damage here? Well, it's currently 18 workers versus 23. I'm inclined to imagine that that is pretty good, but if he's gonna leave this Zerg player alone for a few minutes, we can definitely expect the Zerg to go straight up towards full two base saturation at the very least. And if Gumiho is still stuck on one base at that point, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Spine crawler, by the way, I was gonna say, still in the main base. Link speed at this point is finished. So I'll just hiding those links off to the side, slowly sprinkling in more and more of his, uh, his drones. Okay. One barracks is gonna go home, second barracks is gonna go into the main base. Command center timing there does get scouted by Serral, which is amazing for him. He actually sees exactly what's going on on the other side of the map, and... Yeah, apparently he's now decided, okay, I guess I'll take a third base. This does mean, of course, that Gumiho needs to deal more damage moving forward. I don't believe... Ooh, fusion core coming up. I don't believe that Gumiho can just sit back right now and assume that this amount of damage he's done is enough. Because his own expansion is so late here that he really doesn't have a whole lot to... Well, just sit back and, and, and macro with, right? Like, he really does need a bigger economy in order to justify this opener. Apparently, though... He's not really planning on playing the eco game. Instead, what he's trying to do is occupy this Zerg with Hellions, with the Reapers from the earlier stages of this game. Occupy the Zerg, prevent them from going into a lair, and then eventually show up with a battle cruiser. Roach Warren coming up right now. Serral not thinking about battle cruisers at all. This third base may actually be in some trouble too. I'm actually not sure. There's the BC started up. I'm not actually sure if this third base cancel is gonna benefit Gumiho. Because if Zork is on two bases, they were likely... They're probably gonna go into a lair much quicker. Yeah. He obviously wants to just kill as many links as possible, though. The third hatchery is gonna fall. That barracks has also taken a lot of damage, by the way. Serral just gonna immediately try to remake that one. Okay. Gumiho, man. Accepting the fact that maybe in the long game, he's gonna be in a bit of trouble. But doing a phenomenal job of preventing the games from going the distance so far. Okay, he's actually rallied that starboard all the way towards the back of his main and his natural. I wonder if that means that he actually wants to save up battle cruisers. Yeah, he's going for the Yamato refit right now too, the weapon refit. So he's actually gonna be able to go for the Yamato cannon. Serral is only about halfway done with the lair right now. How many queens does he have? He's got five of them. Five queens should be sufficient to at the very least push back the battle cruiser, but... Okay. There's a sport crawler in the main base too. I think originally Gumiho wanted to save up these units and just suddenly appear in the main base of the Zerg. Not the case this time around. Just going after the sport crawler. I actually don't really like this decision all too much. I think he should really go after the drones. Maybe a little bit slow on the retargeting at the very least. Well, the hatchery goes down and so did that barracks. A Ling run by on the other side of the map. Actually, the wall, it's not fully up yet. So Gumiho, ooh, okay, does push back those links here for the time being. That battle cruiser certainly could have done more damage though. Four drones and a, a spore crawler, I think, went down because of that BC. Nothing all too crazy. Roaches over here also got pushed back by those Reapers from the earlier stages of the game. Gumiho coming in clutch right now, trying his very best to deal as much damage as possible. Third hatchery restarted again for a third time, this time around at the different location. So many drones have gone down though. Double battle cruiser production on the back of this. Serral does have a lair, but he does not have a spire. Ultimately, against battle cruisers, what you need is about a dozen, maybe two dozen uh, corruptors. Corruptors are so important. 
Here's the second battle cruiser about to spawn. Third battle cruiser is going to be quite a ways behind. But these units, they do not mess around. Is he going to targa? Is he going to teleport that one across? No. Looks like we're just going to. Oh, no, we are going to teleport it across. It looks like we were just going to defend the natural for a little bit, is what I was going to say. But he's trying to soft contain this Zerk on just two bases. There's the Yamato cannons. And upon seeing the Yamato, Serral doesn't even see the third battle cruiser. Upon seeing the Yamato, he realizes it's time to tap out. Alrighty, that takes us to Babylon. Standard opener this time around from Gumiho. He's decided to go for a Reaper here, but he's just scouting the third base locations for the most part. His own third base locations, that is. Maybe he's been playing against some Zerks lately. Probably Dark, huh? This is what a yeah, Dark playstyle does to the men. Maybe a little bit concerned about any sort of third base proxies or whatever. I don't really think that Sarah would be going for something like that. Especially when he's behind in a series. Either way, here we go. Serral, hatchery first. Into a gas. Into... Actually, no. No, hold up. He's opening up gasless. That is very interesting. Huh. So this is a third hatchery before an extractor. Meaning that Serral's not gonna have any link speed, he's not gonna have any sort of tech whatsoever. It's just gonna be queens and slow links for the time being. Now here's that same opener again as what we saw in game number one it looks like. Gumiho starting off with, well I mean in game number one it really did go really well for him. But in game number one he started off with a marine push inside of a medevac together with a cyclone. And that army was mostly just meant to kill all of the overlords. There's the Roach Warren coming up. So Sarah actually going straight Roaches. So this is what I was talking about earlier, right? Sarah may have been a little bit predictable in the past. But these days, that really isn't the case anymore. This is a suboptimal way to play, I'm fairly sure. Because it leaves you susceptible to a lot of early game cheeses from the Terran. But Sarah thinking about this series is, okay, there's not really that big a chance my opponent is going to get, you know, something super aggressive underway. I probably can... Cut a corner and go straight into the Roach Warren here. Which is interesting, though. Are we going to make any defensive Roaches? Are we going to use them offensively, maybe? Yeah. I think four or five Roaches is probably good defensively. Six Roaches really does indicate some form of aggression to me. But this is not a very popular build from Zerks. If this would have been a barracks opener once again, I think Serral, well, he would have been in some trouble. You probably would have added on a gas a little bit quicker than this, but... Anyhow... I believe that this Reaper did just now see uh, one of the Roaches too. Two drones going down though to this little bit. <laughs> this is such a strange drop, man. Four drones going down in total is actually really sick. Plus a queen. That queen is de definitely not free. And maybe even better. This is forcing all of these units from the Zerk to stay at home. Yeah. So maybe Gumi could have been in some trouble. I mean, he's going benchies on the back of his too, so I don't really suspect this would really be a big issue for him, but really cool to see. Pretty much all Terran players are out there opening up with a 1-1-1 and a really quick third command center. Not Gumi Hodo. Hellions on the back of this. I really like the Hellions on the back of this, actually. The Hellions on the back of this is what really makes it cool. Okay, that's an awful lot of damage done. Yeah, so Hellions are usually a unit that you only make at, well, unless you're playing mech. You really only play Hellions when you're playing Bio, which seems to be what Gumiho is going for here once again. You only go for one group of Hellions one time in a game. So usually anywhere between like four to maybe if you're like Gumiho, maybe 12 Hellions in total, right? After that though, after the age of the Hellion is over, you don't go back down to Hellions anymore because you need that factory to make other things for you. So he starts off with a Cyclone, then he goes into Hellion production. I do think he spends a little bit of time building add-ons with that factory too, at the very least right now he does. We have a Raven on the back of this too. Yeah, now we're gonna go into that Siege Tank production as well, I believe. So even though all of the roads do eventually lead towards that same unit composition that Gumiho always wants to play in the mid game, he takes a very different route. To what, uh, yeah, most Terra players do. So eventually he does arrive at 1-1, he does get stimp back, he will get combat shields, he does get to watch a standard mid game. I really like the Raven here as well, though. That Raven's really cute. Okay, so anyways, Serral, skipping link speed, very quick infestation pit, by the way. Six and a half minutes into the game and it's already nearly done. 
Roach speed on the back it is too. So if Sarah wants to, he can go for a big timing attack as soon as all of these upgrades are done. But by the amount of drones that he's got and the amount he's producing right now, I don't think that's actually the case. This very much so strikes me as a Sarah who just wants to play the late game. And I think that's probably the intent he's had for this series the entire time. Just try and force the game to go the distance. That is likely where you are stronger. So, yeah, if you can force that to happen, it is the preferable trait. Now, apparently in the previous games, we didn't really ever get there. So now Sarah has decided, I'm going to go for a seven minute hive. Very rapid hive here. Very quick. One interesting thing to note here as well for the finisher is that he's actually decided to expand vertically. So all of his base is here on the left side of the map, which is kind of funny. Normally we have this third base over here and the 12 o'clock expansion taken at this point too. But not in this particular game. There have been a lot of games lately where Terrans have gotten into some fantastic siege tank spots. Now there are a couple of good positions over here too, but apparently Serral deciding to mix it up a little bit. I love that Raven though. As the detector here, boom. Getting so many creep tumor kills already. They don't, uh, yeah, it's eight and in, in, nine in total here. I actually have a little bit more damage up north. Can we get that one? If he would have targeted it, we would have had it, but. Nine creep tumors at this point in the game, considering the start and the units he chose, definitely not bad whatsoever. There's the hive though. The lurker then, just about to finish up. We go for one viper, because at this point he can't really afford that much. They're all a little bit concerned. Still making roaches. This is usually not really the moment anymore where you really want to be producing roaches, but if you're afraid of a big attack here from the Terran, you may very well need to. Here's that Raven once again, together with the Hellions and the Cyclone. I really like that Cyclone. Yeah. Cyclones in general, a little bit of an awkward unit. Very good at early game defense, of course. We see it all the time in other matchups. In Zerg versus Terran, it's definitely not the most popular unit, but... Yeah, neither the Cyclone nor the Raven is particularly popular in this matchup, but it certainly does show that you have a lot of potential here. Okay. Lurkers are here. Seismic Spines, that's the Lurker ranged upgrade. It is gonna make them substantially more powerful. Melee upgrade here on the back of this too, so even though we did rush out Roaches earlier on, we're now gonna transition towards what will likely be a Hydra Ling Bane type of army supported with Vipers and Lurkers. One thing I don't really like too much in Gumiho's playstyle though is his Ghost Academy timing, right? So normally you go for a Ghost Academy around the time that the 4th Command Center is done. So right about right now. But his 4th Command Center is usually very late. So because of that he doesn't actually have... Okay. Don't know why that third one's up there. But he, he doesn't really have enough units to properly deal with these very quick Lurker and Viper transitions. I'm a little afraid that Gumiho doesn't even really realize what's going on, no. So he doesn't actually see any of this tech. He hasn't had vision of the Zerg's natural whatsoever. So these Lurkers are gonna be... Well, unless he's already seen them. Now he sees them for sure. These Lurkers are gonna be able to tear him apart if he's not careful. He decides to stim? Really, he decides to stim. There's the anti armor Missile. anti armor Missile, very helpful, of course. Forcing these Lurkers once again to back up. They don't have their ranged... Or they do have their ranged upgrade, rather, but not the Adaptive Talons upgrade yet. That base over here not gonna happen. Adaptive Talons allows these units to unburrow and burrow much quicker. So repositioning them is easier. There's the Bailing Nest. Serral preparing himself for a transition towards Ghosts. But none of that is really happening so far in this game. Viper, absolutely critical here. Some good yoinks. Getting a couple of the tanks. Not bad at all. Lurkers over here trying to deal some damage. Serral backing off. Lurker over here also getting sniped. There's a lot more roaches though. Yeah, the roach count is really nice. Gumiho trying to invite his opponent off creep once again. That seems to be... Uh, he's a very generous Terran, man. That seems to be what he wants to do. I love those anti armor missiles. The anti armor missiles here are really cool to see. We do have a little bit of energy once again though on the Vipers. Good control right there by Serral. And still no Ghost Academy. No Ghost Academy. That's essentially forcing Gumi into some sort of strange all-in. I mean, he can always add it on, of course, but you really need to build up the Ghost Count, because as soon as this is defended, assuming it will be defended, Zork is going to go for a counter-attack for sure. Now, here's the Roaches once again, and the Armor Missile softening those units up quite a bit, but I think the amount of stuff, even a couple of the Metavecs get bottled down, the amount of stuff right now that Serral has is tremendous. And honestly, right now, I wouldn't mind seeing him just unburrow all of those Lurkers, bring the Vipers to the front, just go for a big attack. 
Zelda, crossing his T's, dotting his I's, not taking any chances. We're gonna instead increase the Lurker count, we're gonna increase the drone count, and we're just gonna try and transition towards more and more upgrades, try and force this game again to go on for as long as possible. Not a lot of Zerks are comfortable playing split map, but on Babylon, it's very difficult for Terran to actually effectively get a split map army going. On a map like Gresfen, for example, or Neo Humanity, that is so much easier for the Terran player. In a best of seven series, you do not actually get to veto any map, because there are only seven maps in the StarCraft 2 map pool. I actually would like there to be nine, but that's a discussion for some other time. Um, oh, nice little drop over here by Gumido. Finishing off the work on that hatchery that he started earlier. Anyways, that does mean... Ooh, okay. I thought he was hold positioning right there for a second, or hold firing right there with those lurkers. That does mean that Serald now is allowing the opponent to get quite a big economy. That hatchery over there does go down once again. It's gonna be real difficult right now, though, for Gumiho to grab additional bases from this particular position that he's in right now. Lurkers over here, trying to deal some damage. Just mostly trying to create a distraction, I would imagine. Snipe going down right now on one of the roaches. Ravager also gets picked off. Gumiho has got a lot of money in the bank. He really needs to step up the macro here. Serral likewise, but Serral is pretty much maxed out. He actually just is waiting right now for his hatchery to finish up rather than making another overlord. Siege tank creeping forward. We're gonna need detection. There it is. Scan does reveal where those lurkers are located. Serral once again decides to back off. We're now at the point in the game where the natural and the main base of the Terran are running low, and even the third base, I mean, that one was taken quite late, but it's gonna be pretty low here pretty soon, so... Gumiho, oh my god, he decides to go into the choke point! My god, that's the choke point you created for yourself! That is so much damage done just now, and yeah, that's it. Serral has decided to go for a full Eric opener right here on Neo Humanity. Low ground wall off here for Gumiho. Opening up, though, with a standard Reaper, so they've really just... Focusing his structures on the front rather than the main ramp. A lot of Zerks, especially the European Zerks, are not too keen on playing this map right now. I was talking to Rainer, I was talking to Saro, I've, I've been talking to most of the high-level European Zerks, and they're basically all saying, yo, this map, all the Terrans that we play on it, they try their very best to create a split map scenario, where basically half of the map is mine, half of the map is theirs, and I just cannot steal any of their bases. And if it is an even split map scenario, Terran with more cost-efficient traits, which they will pretty much always have just because of the nature of how Terran works, um, it is impossible to win. So because of that, at the... What's the tournament called? The ESL StarCraft II Master Summer. There you go. I always get a tournament name mixed up. Um, at this particular tournament, loads of Zerg players were trying their very best to end the game before any of that craziness would happen. And in this particular game, Serral also mixing it up. We saw bailing busts, we saw roach cheeses, we saw loads of different types of aggression just to prevent that split map scenario. And it's actually been kind of cool. A lot of Zerg's not fond of playing this map, and same can be said for Gresvin. But yeah, because of that, we get some very creative strategies here instead. So even though they're complaining, I actually think it's kind of cool to see that we uh, yeah, are now forcing Zerg's to maybe not go for that macro style they're usually very fond of. Anyhow, um, we've got ourselves a lair, mostly done. We've got ourselves a Roach Warren, mostly done as well. Additional gas is coming up. Very late third base. Six Marines inside of a Medivac, together with a Hellion and a Reaper. I mean, this is a Gumiho game to a T already. I'm not exactly sure how we got here. It's a little bit funky, but he may very well be able to force the kill right there on that, or at least the cancel on that third. There we go. No rich Vespian Geyser right here for the finisher. Roach Speed started up at nearly the 4 minute mark, that's pretty crazy. No Evo Chambers, none of that. Just straight Roach Warren, straight Roach Speed. Okay, good split right there by Serral. The very least is gonna be able to get the Widow Mine right there in exchange. Boost into the main base, you love to see it. Except for you, Reaper, you have a jetpack, you don't count, I'm sorry, but... Okay, so what do you think of right now if you're Gumiho? Are you concerned for a Roach Bust? Are you concerned for quick Mutas? I guess he's seen the timing right there of the Gas Geyser or maybe the Lek thereof. I would have really actually liked it if Serral decided to take that Gas rather than this one. 
just because this one is much less likely to be scouted. I think if Gumi Ho made the assumption right now that all four gases were taken, there's a very good chance he would have, at the very least, not taken Mutalis off of his uh, list of builds that Zerg could be going for. Seeing that gas not taken there in the main base is a big indicator that at the very least is not going to be Mutas. Bit of a strange opener here, though, by Serral. Yeah, just a straight Roach push. So we've got three Ravagers morphing in right now. We've got a bunch of Roaches coming up, and now finally drones as well for the, the forward third. So there's a rich Vespian Geyser, does give him additional gas income. That's nice. Reaper goes down, Hellion goes down. Marines over here also taking a whole lot of damage. So we're forced to back off. Now one thing is that Gumiho has also delayed his own third base for quite a while. Careful though. That is a very easy to bio location if Zerg gets even close. Yeah, and that first siege tank, the one in front here, certainly is gonna go down. Ooh, he decides to go through the slow zone to try and finish off that tank. He will get it. Very dangerous move, but you can always morph these units into Ravagers as well. And once they're morphed into Ravagers, they will spawn with full HP once again. That's exactly what Serral decides to do right now. Liberator in the main beta, though. Getting a couple kills, but maybe more importantly, also slowing down the Zerg quite a bit. A lot of that economy. I mean, we can have a look right there at the income. Yeah, a lot of that economy all over the place. Oh no, that siege tank was actually in range of Biles. Uh, this one also in range of Biles. Yeah, that's not the correct spot either. Well, I mean, at the very least, he's going to be able to embrace it right now with the SCVs, but three Biles all at the same time are going to be able to kill that pretty easily. There we go. We're going to go for some extra Biles there as well, just to make sure. Ah, that forces Gumiho to GG out. I think if those Siege Tanks were just ever so slightly further back, he would have been fine. Altitude is next. Largest map in the map pool. Serra has decided to go for a slightly faster spawning pool this time around. No zerking speed or anything on the back of it. Gumiho has decided to go for a command center first. Okay, and while there is a Reaper coming right now, he also does complete the wall of. He will be able to quite easily counter those zerklings once the Reaper is out. But for the time being, there's nothing really for the Terran player to attack with. Okay, factory. There's already an SCV ready to take the job of that guy in case he falls. The Reaper does pop out on the right side of that wall off, so he's gonna be okay and... At this point, since there's no link speed or anything like that on the back of this, Serral's gonna have a hard time getting these units on out of here. Okay. <laughs> that SCV in a little bit of trouble too. Jimmy, though, eventually is gonna be able to save the day. Looks like all of the Zorklings decided to split up. Yeah. No, you can't really send a Reaper across. That's still the annoying part, right? You never really know exactly when link speed finishes and whether or not you'll need that Reaper at home. So for now, I think Gumiho, I mean, he can take a chance if he wants to. Okay, that's exactly what he decides to do. He needs to know whether or not there's a third hatchery at the very least. Now there's not a link coming in. Yeah, even though this is gonna be... Ooh, okay. Even though this is gonna be six Zorkling kills here. And Serral, well, until I started the, that sentence, he, he didn't really deal any damage. Yeah, this is actually quite okay right here for the Finnish player. Mostly because of the fact that he's been pinning that Terran player at home for such a long time. Third hatchery, though, has started up here eventually. We do have the metabolic boost upgrade about to finish up as well. And he's actually already added the drones back to the gas geyser, so... What exactly is the plan over there? I think Serral decided to throw this, this curveball in the early game. Mostly just to try and throw the Terran player off. Because Gumiho clearly has had something funky for every single one of these games. So Serral's saying, yo, I will, I, will, I will contain the amount of damage I take by going for this strange curveball at the start. And I'll give you six links, but I'll buy myself a lot of time and I'll probably force you into something that looks at least a little bit more standard. So Lair coming up right now, I'm assuming there will be a bailing nest on the back of this too. Sarl's just been trying to play a normal game for most of the time, but so far he really hasn't had much of a chance. There once again, by the way, do we have the Raven on the back of it? So... There's spore crawlers coming up. Those spore crawlers are actually quite bad right here for Serral. They're not really gonna do anything for him. Okay. Yeah, there's one spore crawler over here, one spore crawler over there. One over at the third base too. Serral expecting that this could be a Banshee follow-up. He saw the timing right there of the Viking. So honestly, even against Banshees, these spores would be very early. But it turns out there's none of that even coming up. As Gumiho has decided to go for the Raven. And now he decides to add on additional factories as well. He's been playing Bio for basically every game so far. 
in a bit of a strange way, maybe, but he's been playing bio-based armies. Now he decides to go for a mechanical-based army instead. Double factory on the back of this as well. For a little bit, Gumiho was playing one factory, one starport straight into double armory. That was a little bit nuts, maybe a little bit greedy. This time around, he does go for the double armory after barrack, or sorry, after factory, uh, number two and three. Okay. Hellions roaming the map. Serraldo going into a Baneling Nest here, which does create a bit of an awkward moment for him when he realizes that this is mech. I don't think he quite realizes it at this point, but... Mutaling Bane can still be quite good against Terran mech units too. We've seen that, of course, in some of the previous ZVTs I've casted as well over the last month. I think it was Solar, if I'm not mistaken. Who showed us that... Well, yeah, Mutas are still a very good choice against Terran mech. And Serral going for the 1-1 upgrades for the Lings and the Banes together. And I guess Ultras. I don't want to forget Ultras, but I highly doubt we're going to see those. Uh, together with the Baneling speed upgrade. Now, there's a lot of Lings available over here. Queen's in the back, too. How much damage can he do over here? Love those auto turrets, by the way. Auto turrets don't mess around. That's seven kills, eight kills, nine kills right there for that Raven. Six drones have gone down. All right, now the Rotorn also does start. Okay. In the end, all the Hellions do die. Raven snuck away. He's like, later, suckers. I don't care. It did take a bunch of damage, but at the very least, he's going to be able to repair it back up to full. Factory number four and five right now. One one is fired up. So this is an indication that he does want to transition towards, for example, siege tanks and Thors here eventually, but just not anytime soon. Okay, so it's gonna be Roach Ravager Ling Bane here for the time being for our Zerg. It's a curious unit composition. It's very good against Protals in particular, but against Terran, especially when they can kite you. It's really quite difficult to slow them down. You need a tremendous amount of creep threat in order to prevent that Terran army from escaping. Couple of Bailings over here get scouted too. Nice timing right there by the Gumi God. Hellion run by. Or I guess fly by on the left side of the screen. There's a couple of spores here inside of the main base. Yeah, that's the spore crawler that was previously built in the natural. So maybe the medevac has to be a bit careful, but with blue flame especially, right? Those Hellions can really pack a punch. It's still about 10 seconds away from finishing. I think he should actually wait. Instead, we're gonna just unload the medevac right now. Five seconds. I mean, he's still gonna be able to get drone kills here for sure. There's the blue. Lovely play by Gumiho in this series though. Serral, of course, by the way, at this point, on match point. You need to win four games in order to win a best of seven. Oh. I would not be able to withstand the temptation right there to drop that helmet once again to the ground. Anyways, Gubiho just roaming around, right? Trying to kill as many of those active creep tumors as possible. Here's the pathogen glance coming up for Serral. Thor transition, together with Siege Tanks, coming up right now for Gumi. Basically around the time that he finished 1-1, is apparently the moment where he calls it a day on the Cyclone Hellions. And, you know, maybe maybe the Raven can also be considered part of that army. But he hasn't really committed with any of those units, just a little bit of pressure, a little bit of creep clearing, and that's about it. Now there's Gumi, with his trademark Medivac, or his trademark Medivex, right? This is such a cool style. So basically the plan is, we've seen him do this several times before, and I don't know if Serral is really familiar with it. But the plan is to basically lift up the Thors, lift up the Hellbats, and drop them on top of that Zerg army. It's very good, especially when Zerg is focused on Hydras. The problem is, in this particular case, this is a bit of a strange unit comp as well for Zerg. Roach Ravager Ling Bane, like I said, good against Protals, a little funky though against, against Terran Mech, so... Not exactly sure what the follow-up is going to be right here from Serral. He did get himself the Infestor Energy Improvement. That's the Pathogen Glance. Now he's getting the Neural Parasite Research as well. That's going to allow him to force a couple of those Terran units to change sight. Spire coming up. Eventually, I think what Serral is aiming for here is Infestors together with Brutelords. Brutelord and Infestor, always a scary unicorn. 
Viper's obviously amazing too if you can spare the uh, the gas. And that's one thing that is quite nice here for the Zerg. Lings and Roaches may be a bit awkward together, but they're very good defensively, and it's relatively cheap in gas. The main scary part though is this right over here. Gumiho, maxed out. This is a super powerful army. He doesn't have 3-3 done yet. He starts that up right now as I speak. I've got a feeling Saros will just give up some of these bases, yeah. He needs Neural Parasite at the very least. But that Raven, like I said, still a detector. It can see those units coming in from a mile away. So I really like this from Gumi. Look at him. Positioning that, that Raven really cleanly. That is one siege tank going down, but for a hatchery, I think that's a pretty good trait. A few roaches here for a counterattack too. That's actually really nice. Picking up some of those reinforcing units and maybe more importantly, buying time. Gumiho decides to go back, it looks like. Dangerous decision right here. There's the Greater Spire coming up. Hatchery on the right side. Force forward as well. I think that little Roach run by actually just allowed Serral to basically f just force his entire Terran army back home, which is huge. Okay. There's still a lot of supply caught up in Ravagers, though. It's about time we start trading those out for some Corruptors, I believe. Infestors on the back of this. He does see one of them over there. Okay, there's the Raven. Oh, here's the drop, here's the drop, here's the drop! Neural Parasites do also come down, though, and a few of the Thors and a few of those Terra units do at the very least temporarily change sites. The Hellbats are gone, but that was an excellent trade right there for Gumiho. And the Armour Missile also just gonna force this Zerg army to keep on running, I would imagine. No, not Serral, apparently. Corrosive Biling, the Thor that he just took control of. There you go, finishes the job as well. Most Zerg players would be backing off right there, but Sarah looked at that, he's like, you know what, Corrosive Bile is still pretty nice. But that was pretty expensive. Four Infestors have gone down here. Gumiho trying to take as many bases as possible. He's taking that expansion to the top left hand corner as well. Can be difficult for Zerg to expand all the time here as well on this map though, but... Not quite as hard as for the Terran. The Terran really needs to be on top of everything. He actually just decided to cancel that base. That surprises me. There wasn't anything harassing that, but... Unless I missed it. The upgrades are looking real nice right now, though, for the Terran player. Adrenal Glance is done, but against Blue Flame Hellbats, I don't really see what Zorklings are going to be able to do. Zorklings mostly just used here, I think, for the counterattack and maybe to clear out any leftover Terran units, like, yeah, for example, this. Okay, nicely done right there by Serral. Another Thor, can we kill that one? I mean, nah, not quite. Link's decided to burrow, Scan is gonna reveal them, and the Thor manages to live for a little bit longer. Okay, these Infestors are very scary. Here, once again, are a lot of Hellbats loaded into those Metafacts. Here's the Neural Parasites. Once again, he's dropping whatever he can. Thors do temporarily change sites, but Gumiho is pushing forward right now. There's a lot of Zerg reinforcements on the back of this, too. Keep in mind, Zerg can reinforce much quicker than Terran. As a matter of fact, Terran is uh, transitioning towards the Fusion Core right now. Starport units take forever to produce. Little Roach run by once again. Zerklings and Roaches have been incredibly annoying. This is probably the only thing that Gumiho doesn't normally see when he plays this army composition of his. Once again, though, Corrosive Bowels forced to split the Terran. Or maybe forcing to split the Terran. I think actually Gumiho should go back. Yeah, he doesn't have enough to pick up all of his expensive units inside of those Metavex. I think we need some more for support here. Okay. Sorry, little Thor, you don't have enough space. Inside of those planes, but maybe you don't even want to be part of this, uh, this little drop squad over here, man. That's a scary amount of units. Air weapons coming up here as well for Gumi. He's finished 3-3, or he's finishing 3-3. Apparently he's now going to use one of those armories for air units instead. Okay. Careful, yeah, I was going to say, there's always infestors close by when you least expect them. Losing five Thors would be very painful, but at the very least that army is creating a distraction, and it's going to allow him to kill on that base over here on the right side. Deck Lab's coming up. Battle cruisers coming up as well for Gumiho. Keep in mind now, Neural Parasite. It's been key already for the Zerg. Neural Parasite can still be used as well against battle cruisers. He really needs to have ghosts here. 
every Terran player addresses these late game spellcasters by going ghosts. Now, I like that Gumiho doesn't go for ghosts right away, but I do think they're a critical unit to have in the late game. EMP is just incredibly powerful. Actually, we just see this planetary fortress straight up going down since Gumiho is out of position with his siege tanks. Without a proper answer to those infestors, though, I am a little bit concerned right here for Gumi. Problem is, as soon as Cyril sees that this is better cruisers, I think he just doubles down on the infestor count. Okay, scan over here does reveal where that Zerk army is located. This is actually a very scary Zerk army, man. We have three battle cruisers coming up, but they're not out just yet. Here we go once again. He's thinking about boosting forward. Gumiho very concerned about the Neural, but not so concerned that he decides to actually get a counter against the Neural. Like most Zerk players and most Protoss players, they seem to think that the Ghost is too powerful. And yeah, I, I really do think that it's maybe a little overtuned as well. It's a shame that Gumiho is not improving his army by going for the Ghost. He's definitely got the money for it. He certainly could make some of it right now, but he decides to go for the Medifact drop instead. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a difficult unit composition to micro, and there's a lot of moving parts, but EMP really would be the nail in the coffin in my mind. Anyways, no Ghost mech in this particular game so far. Battlecruiser mech instead, together with Thor drops. <laughs> Little run by once again. They do see all of those battle cruisers, and Saro immediately fires up corruptors, and he also goes for a second spire. Okay, corrosive balls. Not really connecting with a whole lot. He does lose a few units, and he's going to immediately replace those lost supplies with more and more corruptors. Infestors moving into the back, but nice corrosive balls there this time around. Are we going to go for the neural parasites? I mean, he's thinking about it. Good snipes right there by Gumi. Okay, one of these units does end up going down. Thor also does go down, but here come the battle cruisers. The battle cruisers are here right now. We do have enough energy right here for neural parasites. Once again, there we go. Serral now has control of the Terran units. He decides to Yamato gun a couple of the Thors. The Thors get picked up right there inside of the Metafax, effectively canceling that uh, Yamato gun move right there by Serral. Very cute counterplay by both players. The Siege Tanks, though, not participating in this fight whatsoever. We have a lot more Zerg reinforces on the back of this, too. Gumiho trying to make his uh, perfect trade here. But in the end, Serral seems to be a little bit quicker on the keyboard. He's now chasing down as many of those units as possible, too, without the Metavex. I've got a feeling that most of his army will not be able to go back home. Another battle cruiser rallied into the middle of his army. He decides to jump that one away, though. It is going to start harassing one of those outer bases from the Zerg. Serral burrows the drones and at the very least prevents them from going down. But now the Zerg links have arrived. And they're going to be able to easily kill all of those leftover units. That was an expensive army to lose. Gumiho has got a lot of money in the bank, not really spending it yet. Probably not entirely sure what army comp he should make. Or maybe he's just a little slow on the macro here. He's got so much money. Gumi, please make something. Seven Hellions, ain't it, dude? We've got three starports and six, but please make something. Okay, well, that's just a command center going down. Five additional infestors coming up. He's still not making anything. Okay, now we finally fire up additional BCs. These units take forever to produce. Uh, I, I just... Hmm. I don't see how you can like play a proper late-game Terran army without ghosts. Like, Snipe is great, but especially EMP to prevent those... Neural parasites here would just be amazing. Instead, he's trying to just harass all of these Zerg bases to death. And you know what? It's working out quite well for him. That's, I think, another base going down, at least if he decides to target it down. But obviously, this is by no means a max that army. It's closer to like 150 supply, since a lot of that Terran army is still in the production tab. Another Neural Parasite comes up. There's just not enough here for the Terran player to really survive against all of these Zerg units. Gumiho probably looking at his supply count. He's like, okay, it's time to go. But a lot of that supply is caught up in these units that are still not out. You pay for it in supply and for resources and all that right as you start up the unit. Not when the unit finishes. That can sometimes be a pretty significant misread. Roaches, Ravagers and Infestors, man. With Zorklings and a couple Corruptors for support. Not messing around. 20 SCVs have gone down. Now the Corruptors, yeah, they're just gonna go into the main base, they have a Caustic Spray ability. Usually not particularly great, but it can be incredibly powerful in the right circumstance. 
That's where a lot of that production is at. Hatchery does go down. Another hatchery here falls as well on the left side of the map. Seraldo still has a lot of money in the bank. And with this amount of gas, I don't think he would really mind making additional infestors either. I guess more uh, Ravagers would also be nice. With this amount of gas, you have a bunch of options available. Okay. One of the orbital commands flying on over towards this side of the map as well. Gumiho is starting to run out of cash. Yeah, the income here over the last 10 minutes really tells us the story. Gumiho trying to go for one big army, and he did get there eventually, but the micro was just ever so slightly worse than Serral's. I do really like that interaction though, right? So, the battlecruisers jump forward, Serral grafts the battlecruisers with Neural Parasite, he then decides to go and Yamato cannon down the Thors, and then Gumiho picks up the Thors with the Metavex to effectively counterplay those Yamato guns. That is really cute. Okay, the Cyclone count is looking kind of terrifying now, though. How many better cruisers do we have? We've got five of them. I think for the most part, they haven't really been scouted yet, although this one little Zerkling may have just caught the tail end of some of them. Neural Parasite right now, though, being used on units that really don't require it. Okay, that Thor is likely going to be killed here as well. Yep. Battle cruisers are in the top left hand corner. You can see them moving around on the mini map. Serral, in the meantime, pushing forward over here, though. There's not enough siege tanks remaining to really keep these roaches and ravagers at bay. Now the battle cruisers do show up. Suddenly, five BCs are available. More corruptors do get fired up here, too, for Serral, but he's maxed out and he can't actually produce any more. He doesn't have that much money in the bank, and battle cruisers do certainly trade very effectively. We do have one Yamato gun uh, going down on a Ravager. I really think that should have been an Infester. Either way, though, is there enough for the Zerg player to actually counter this big attack right here from our Terran? I think this is essentially the final attack right here from Gumiho. Finding these outer bases is nice. A lot of drones over here. Very dangerous move right there as well by the finisher, but at the very least they managed to sneak away. Serral now has the golden minerals at his disposal. Quite a few corruptors actually miss Rally there. Nicely done right here by Gumi once again using the Yamato guns. Ooh, corrosive balls though do a lot of damage. And here come those corruptors that just got fresh out of their cocoons. They decide to go after all of those heavy hitters from the Terran player. Yeah, those battle cruisers, they are certainly gonna go down if they stick around any longer. This guy does not have a Yamato cannon available, but it could certainly jump away. Still, quite a few ground units are still available here for the Zerk too. Do we have enough to really push back all of these Cyclones and Hellions? I do believe we do. There's a fungal growth as well by Serral, man. Once again, micro these units really wonderfully. Corruptors very far away. Apparently they, uh, yeah, they were made for this, but Serral doesn't even need it. Apparently fungal growth and corrosive biles does just fine. Here come those Corruptors once again, man. The Corruptors have been sniped wonderfully here. The problem is... Yeah, just the fungal I think is enough. There we go. The problem is that Gumiho does not have any income anymore. He's got very little money remaining. That's one solution to that problem. <laughs> That's a lot of mules. Okay, okay, I actually really like that here for Gumi. We'll have to wait until this income advantage updates, but as soon as those mules start returning resources, life does get a little bit easier. Nice little Hellbat drop over here too. Fungal growth on the Metavex. The Metavex really have been phenomenal in this game, putting in so much value. Okay, this hatchery may actually be in a little bit of trouble too. Not just yet, but if these Terran units get another lock on, life is gonna be better. Okay, Terran doesn't have much income. But a whole lot more than he did just about a minute or two ago. 72 workers versus only 29. Neuroparasites? Yeah, neuroparasites here are gonna once again hurt quite a bit. There come the Hellbats once again, dropping out of all of those Metavex. Trying their very best, but there's not enough Terran army available anymore. And it's Serral, who is the StarCraft II ESL Master Summer Champion. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, first off, thank you very much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed this cast. If you did, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. And if you really enjoyed this, I upload new videos pretty much every day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today, I also want to give a special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. If you're interested in some of the perks, you can head on over to patreon.com slash locotv. There's also a link down below in the description of this video. For now, though, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.